The movie begins by introducing us to Fred Ballinger, a renowned composer who's now retired. He's currently on vacation at a luxurious resort in the Swiss Alps with his friend Mick Boyle, who's a well-known filmmaker. One afternoon, some representatives of the Queen of England approach Fred and ask him to perform his famous composition, Simple Songs, at Prince Philip's birthday celebration. However, Fred promptly rejects the offer, saying he's tired of work and wants to spend the rest of his life peacefully. Just then, we see a famous young Hollywood actor named Jimmy Tree who's observing this conversation. Shortly after, as the delegates are departing, they encounter the unexpected sight of the famous football player Diego Maradona in the swimming pool, which surprises them. Maradona becomes breathless while swimming and requires help from his assistant to exit the pool and catch his breath. That evening, Jimmy approaches Fred and initiates a conversation, sharing how they both are misunderstood throughout their lives. Despite Jimmy's involvement in numerous outstanding movies, he's often only remembered for Mr. Q, a robot film that he despises. He points out that Fred faces a similar situation, where, regardless of his numerous remarkable musical compositions, he's forever associated with simple songs, overlooking his other works. Fred also agrees with this and asks Jimmy what he's doing in this place. In response, Jimmy reveals that he's shooting a new movie in Germany in a month and is preparing for the role. Following that, Fred heads to a room to meet his friend Mick. Mick was once a famous filmmaker whose prime has passed, and now he's assembled a group of young screenwriters to collaborate on his upcoming movie titled Life's Last Day. Mick confidently assures Fred that this film will be a masterpiece, as his longtime friend and talented actress Brenda will play the unforgettable leading lady in the film. The two then talk about the Miss Universe who's coming to the hotel since one of her prizes is a free week's stay at this place. The next day, while receiving a message, Fred's daughter and assistant, Lena, arrives at the scene. It turns out Lena's married to Julian, who's Mick's son. She shares with Fred that she and Julian have planned a two-week vacation in Polynesia. Lena informs them that she's arranged for full-service care, including massages, sauna sessions, and daily checkups with a doctor during her absence. She then suggests that he visit Venice and bring flowers to her mother, but Fred doesn't reply to her requests. Meanwhile, we see Mick with his team of writers who are arguing with each other over the script. They're all feeling anxious and frustrated because they've been unable to come up with a satisfying ending for their movie. Later, Fred and Mick take a walk together, and Fred asks the latter about Gilda Black, a woman they both loved 60 years ago. Fred wonders if Mick ever slept with her, given his promise not to pursue her out of respect for Fred's feelings. However, Mick admits he doesn't even remember if they were intimate because it was so long ago. The two then talk about how their memories are fading, and Fred admits to Mick that he can't remember his family. He shares that he worked hard with his daughter Lena to ensure she would remember him, but he worries that one day all their efforts will be forgotten and rendered meaningless. That evening, when Fred returns to his suite, he finds Lena crying and screaming her heart out. Afterward, he goes to Mick's room and delivers the news that Julian has left Lena for another woman, leaving her profoundly upset. Mick doesn't defend his son, assuring that Julian is a bastard like his mother. He then immediately calls Julian and berates him for his actions. The following day, Julian shows up at the hotel and meets with Fred and Mick. He confesses he's fallen for someone else and wants to divorce Lena. Furious with this, Mick demands to know who the new lover is, and she turns out to be a famous singer named Paloma Faith, who introduces herself to them. Frustrated, Mick asks Julian why he'd leave a perfect and beautiful woman like Lena for Paloma, who he finds vulgar. But Julian awkwardly admits that Paloma is amazing in bed, something Lena apparently lacks. Later, during a walk, Lena insists on knowing the conversation between Mick and Julian. Fred assures her that the other woman is unattractive and insignificant compared to Lena. She then wonders why Julian left her so abruptly and asks his father for some explanation, which he tries to avoid. However, after Lena demands an answer, Fred tells her exactly what Julian said, making her feel even worse. The next day, during a spa session, Fred tries to comfort Lena, telling her that he understands how she feels. However, Lena becomes upset and claims that only her mother could truly empathize because she had experienced similar situations. She recalls how Fred used to prioritize his music above everything else, neglecting his family's needs. However, her mother loved him so much that she forgave him every time, even though he gave her nothing. Lena reminds him of when he cheated on her mother with another man and called it an experiment. Meanwhile, Fred doesn't respond to Lena's claims and concerns. Instead, he continues to listen silently. In the next scene, Lena has a horrible nightmare about Julian and his new girlfriend starring in a music video. As she wakes up horrified, her father tries to calm her down. Lena admits that she wants to share something personal with him. She tells him that Julian left her because she was incredibly amazing in bed, which he couldn't handle. 
Hearing this, Fred says he was aware of it, and when Lena asks how, he reveals that she's his daughter, and he used to be very good at analyzing people, which makes Lena laugh. The following day in the hotel, Fred stumbles upon a young boy playing his famous tune, Simple Songs. Intrigued by this, Fred approaches the boy and asks if he knows who composed the music. Surprisingly, the boy has no idea and says his teacher taught it to him. Fred then reveals that he is the composer, but the boy finds it hard to believe, so he suggests the boy ask the front desk about him. And while the boy continues playing, Fred kindly helps adjust his arm position. Moments later, Lena informs Fred about the Queen's emissary's return. Sitting together, the emissary reveals that he conveyed Fred's message to the Queen, who still insists on hiring him to perform simple songs. However, Fred refuses the offer, saying he has personal reasons. Still, as the man continues to persist, Fred gets really angry and says that he composed the simple songs with his wife, and she was the only one who ever performed and recorded them. Therefore, as long as he lives, she will be the only one to sing them. But due to her condition, she can no longer sing. Hearing this, the delegate then walks out of the room while Lena, who's been listening to the conversation, breaks down in tears. Meanwhile, Mick stands among his writers, delivering a heartfelt speech filled with pride for their screenplay collaboration. He admits that despite making 20 movies in his life, this particular film holds special significance as his emotional, intellectual, and moral testament. As he toasts the movie, one of the writers asks about the ending, which hasn't been finalized yet, but Mick's confident that he'll come up with it sooner or later. Later, as Fred relaxes in the pool with Jimmy, the little boy from earlier approaches Fred and says that he confirmed his identity with the hotel staff. The boy reveals that ever since Fred adjusted his elbow position, his violin playing has greatly improved and feels more natural. Fred tells him that it's because he's left-handed. Just then, Maradona, who happened to overhear their conversation, joins in and reveals that he's also left-handed. Jimmy then remarks that the whole world knows this fact, after which Maradona thanks him and walks away. In the next scene, Lena goes to stay by the pool, and a guy named Luca is instantly captivated by her beauty. He then approaches her and introduces himself, saying he's a mountaineer and is currently teaching lessons in the hotel. Lena also introduces herself, and they engage in a delightful conversation. Afterward, Luca carries a small girl on his back, teaching her climbing techniques while Lena watches in astonishment. Meanwhile, we see Maradona at the tennis court, excitingly playing with tennis balls as a football. That evening, while Jimmy's sitting with the others, Miss Universe approaches him and says she's a big fan of his. She excitedly brings up his most popular movie, Mr. Q, which leaves Jimmy feeling frustrated. She then says how she wants to be an actress, but Jimmy's not interested in the conversation, so he sends her away. The following day, Jimmy decides to undergo a transformation, cutting his hair and completely changing his appearance to look like Hitler. As he steps out into public, people are shocked and captivated by his new look. In the evening, still dressed as Hitler, Jimmy meets with Mick and reveals that he's been observing the hotel guests for a week. He then states he must decide whether to tell the story of horror or desire. Jimmy claims to have chosen desire, since that's what keeps us alive, and therefore he no longer wants to play the role of Hitler in his upcoming movie. The next morning, Fred and Mick are enjoying the pool when Miss Universe unexpectedly joins them, completely nude. The two old men are captivated by her beauty and admire the scene. However, soon after, Mick receives news that his upcoming lead actress, Brenda, has arrived to meet him. Mick then rushes over to Brenda, full of excitement. As the two sit down, he begins discussing the movie and tells her that he's finally come up with an ending. Brenda, on the other hand, breaks the bad news that she no longer wants to work on the movie since she's landed a role in a series that pays well. Hearing this, Mick gets furious and says that TV shows are a waste of time and that he's going to make real cinema. But Brenda claims that his past three films were terrible and he should just retire now since he's old. This enrages Mick and he begins to insult her, claiming that he helped her to succeed many years ago and made her who she is now. However, Brenda claims that she earned everything on her own and she doesn't owe him anything. The following morning, Mick informs his writers that Brenda's no longer in the film and that he can't think of anyone else for the role. The writers try to cheer him up by stating that he's a great filmmaker and his movies have a greater worth than a TV show. They advise him not to worry about the role, but Mick simply states that the movie's over and walks away. Later, while out on a stroll, Mick begins to have hallucinations of various women he's directed throughout the years, which makes him feel overwhelmed and emotional. Following that, Mick visits Fred and informs him with a heavy heart that his movie's now over. He claims that without Brenda, the movie's never going to be good. They then discuss how their vacation is coming to an end, and Fred says he'll go home and continue his usual routine. But Mick says he doesn't do routine, and he'll now start another movie with a different concept. 
However, moments later, Mick goes up to the balcony and takes a dive, taking his own life while Fred watches in fear and shock. On the other hand, upon hearing of Mick's death, Brent is seen inside an airplane going out of control, asking his forgiveness while the plane crew tries to calm her down. Meanwhile, Fred, overwhelmed by grief, breaks down in tears as he fondly remembers his dear friend. Later, he goes to the doctor's office, who tells them that they have the results of all the medical tests that have been done on him and assures them that he's in perfect health. Following this, Fred goes to Venice and eventually meets his wife, Melanie, who's in a care home. He tells her that the children only know a portion of their lives and should not be told more. Fred recalls how the first time he saw her on stage, he trembled, causing the entire orchestra to laugh at him. He remembers how Melanie sold her mother's jewelry years ago to fund a second piece at a time when everyone felt he was a vulgar and arrogant musician. Fred claims that despite all the hardships and pain they endured, he wants to remember their relationship as a simple song. The camera then turns to Melanie's face, where she appears paralyzed, looking out with her mouth gaping, unable to communicate. After all the events that happened to him, Fred finally decides to present a concert to the Queen, symbolizing his acceptance of the changes that life brings. While the concert sequence takes place, Lena discovers a profound sense of joy as she embarks on a journey of newfound happiness, accompanied by her companion, Luca. 